you, darling. Hello, everybody. Hello and welcome. It's 11, 11 a.m. in London. It's 11 something where you are, unless you're in India, because they're on the half hour, which is kind of strange. Welcome, welcome. So how is everybody today? So today what I thought I'd do in our daily message is, as per the description, I'm going to talk about my the hand movements I make when I chant, when we chant, um, because someone was asking me about them, so I thought, well, I'll explain those. I'm going to talk about the move of the planet Venus, planet of love and abundance, into Gemini, which is happening now, and what that means. I'm going to talk about the full moon, because that's coming up. And we'll do a chant and a card. So it's five things to do in, I don't know, 20 minutes, half an hour. Usually these go for about half an hour. I try to make them 10 minutes, but they go for half an hour. So let's talk about, first of all, the hand movement. Somebody was saying to me, what mudras am I making when, I'm, when we're chanting, when we do the chant, which we've been doing, the Mahakali chant, which we're going to do again today. If you're new here, I'll explain this when we get to it. But we do a chant every day. It's to... Uh, it's kind of anti all negativity, which is what we need at the moment, not just against the dreaded virus, obviously, which is, you know, changing the world as we speak, but also against fear that some people have around this, um, you know, and some people have very valid fear, you know, they've lost their jobs or they're suffering in some way, being at home, stuck at home. So we're doing a chant against that. And someone was saying to me, they saw that I was doing what looks like mudras. They're not actually mudras. When I, the only mudra I ever really do, a mudra is when you, it's kind of a, a, a thing, a thing in uh, meditation and um, in the Eastern tradition. Um, it's an Indian word. I, I assume it's a Sanskrit word um, where you put your fingers in certain ways, fingers and thumbs when you're chanting. And, you know, I watch my teacher in India, Narani Amma, and Amma's always doing different mudras but i actually don't know that much about them i only know a couple of basic ones and actually this question that somebody sent me made me think gosh i would like to know more about mudras so maybe that's something we can explore together but what i'm doing are not mudras i'm actually counting okay because when um i'm chanting uh you know i say oh we're going to do nine chants for example and uh, by the way, I can see all your comments, but I will read them after as always, because I'm just a bit too far away from the camera to read them, or I might scooch in a bit in a minute and have a look. Um, but when I'm doing chants on something like this, you know, we want to do nine chants, for example. And, uh, you know, nine is a, is a kind of a sacred number, uh, at least in the traditions that I understand of chanting, which I've learned, everything I've learned about chanting, pretty much I've learned at the ashram that I go to in India, which is the Sri Narayani Pedam. Anyway, so I, you can't count in your head because the whole thing with chanting is that you're meant to just sort of abandon yourself to the chant. And so if you're kind of counting in your head as you chant, then you're kind of going to mess up the system. Um, you can't really kind of transcend. And, and in fact, just as an aside, I was listening to Kuri Chowdhury, who's the author of that book I'm still reading, um, this one here, Sound Medicine. Really great book gets a bit technical at times but I'm actually reading it and listening to it on audible and when it goes all technical and you're listening on audible it doesn't matter you could just sort of let it wash over you but anyway I'm digressing but what Kareet was saying was that in fact with mantras the idea is to lose the mantra and to just go into the void eventually as well you know which we're not really doing here I'm giving you the, the mantra to understand it so this is how you count it all right so you count on your fingers. This is, I learned this from a Vedic priest in India in about 2004. So you've got these little pads on your fingers, okay? There's the bottom one, the second one, the third one. And to count to 10, you put your thumb on the first one. That's one. I'll just use my finger to show you. One, two, three, four. So you go one, two, three, four, and then you skip right to the ring finger. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you're going downwards and then upwards on the little finger. Eight, nine, ten. So you use your thumb. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight nine which is where i stop and then ten and then if you were 
doing 108 chants, for example, when you get to the first one, you put your you put your finger there, your thumb on your finger there, and that's one, but that's 10. So then when you go through the next round of 10, then you go that, and you know you've done 20. So if your fingers were like that, for example, uh, let's see, that would be 10, 20. So if they were like that, for example, you'd know you'd done 23. So it's a way of doing it quite mechanically without actually having to think about it. So that's what I'm doing when, I, when we do our chant. I'm counting to nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then if we got to 10, I'd put my finger there and then I know it's 10. Then you do the little finger, the top of the little finger again as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And then I'd go to there, so I know I've done 20. And then start again on the bottom of the first finger. One, two, three, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Go up one here. So I'm on the third, the third bit. One, two, three. So that's 30. Start again at the top of the little finger. One, two, three, four, five, six. That would be 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. So that's that. Isn't it cool? I love that little system. Okay, so um, now let's talk about uh, Venus into Gemini. Venus is moving into Gemini, is now in Gemini, uh, which if you read your daily horoscopes on my website, yasminbolan.com, um, you will see that uh, today I've explained to you where Venus is in your chart. Now, where Venus is in your chart right now is always interesting because Venus is the planet of love and abundance. And uh, so wherever Venus goes, a little bit of magic goes, a bit like my, uh, the filter I have on Instagram. Um, there's magic where Venus goes. However, the other thing that's really interesting at the moment is to know that Venus is going to do a retrograde in May. And um, Venus only retrogrades about once every 18 months. So it's very interesting to know where Venus is now because then you will understand where Venus is going to retrograde. And Venus retrograde is very interesting given what's happening in the world right now because Venus is about love and abundance and what we really value, okay? And when Venus goes backwards, it's a time to reconsider what we really value, what really matters to us. And one thing that's going on in the world right now, obviously with all of us being isolated and home and all this, is that we're all re-evaluating our priorities and what really matters. And I mean, I'll just say as a personal example, today uh, someone put on one of the WhatsApp groups that I'm on, um, something about Italy. And it was sort of this beautiful montage to the song, you know, Volare, if you know that song, it's a beautiful song. And it was beautiful people in piazzas in Italy and then walking down and the Trevi Fountain and then like a Louis Vuitton shop and people on the Riviera at expensive restaurants and all that. And actually it kind of, something that I might've in the past thought, oh, that looks amazing, I'd love to do that. I kind of thought, gosh, that's all that really expensive stuff that, doesn't seem so important now of, you know, oh, I just want to go and have a five course Michelin starred meal overlooking whatever the Mediterranean, you know, it just all seems so foreign now. And, and I think that's what Venus retrograde is going to be about this time. It's going to be about us realizing what really matters, you know, and I mean, literally for me, what really matters now is I love, I keep saying it, I know, and, and we're not having like the perfect time. Like we are, we've had some ups and downs. I told you a couple of days ago, I went a bit crazy and I had a bit of cabin fever and you know, today it feels really good. And I'm just happy to be home and safe and healthy, touch wood, you know? And so our values maybe are changing a bit. Everyone's talking about how are we going to be different when all this ends? Well, Venus retrograde next month is going to help us revalue. Uh, reevaluate what really matters to us. And so Venus is going to retrograde in the sign of Gemini. Now, yes, if you're Gemini or Gemini rising, that means something, and we'll get to that later. Ditto if you're Sag or Sag rising, it's particularly kind of important. But for all of us, if you, if you find out where Venus is for you now, that's where Venus is going to um, retrograde for you. It is in my horoscopes today on my website, yasminbolan.com. Um, 
But let me just say, if you do go and read your horoscopes, read your rising sign, because you will get much, much, much more information about your life if you read your rising sign. For reasons I will explain another time. I just also want to mention the fact that uh, we're coming up to the full moon, and uh, the full moon is going to be taking place in the sign of Libra, which is the relationship sign. So there are going to be turning points in relationships now. Now, obviously, I was thinking, you know, what about people who just met someone just before we all went into quarantine? And, uh, you know, either just in time to kind of say, well, you know, we'll see each other in, in quarantine or, or just before. And then it's kind of, you, you know, maybe someone, say if you're online having a, a, a online dating kind of thing and you were just about to meet up someone you thought was amazing. And then suddenly because of all this, you can't meet up. You know, there's some pretty intense things going on. Plus, you've got couples who maybe don't spend that much time together um, suddenly spending 24 hours a day. I mean, that must be a thing for some people. It's like, you know, whoa, or who don't see their kids that much because their kids are at school and they work nine to five. And suddenly, you know, it's like, I mean, obviously people get together in the holidays, but this is different. People are trying to work and so on. So now is why it's such an important time to live consciously as we move towards the full moon in the sign of relationships, Libra. Think about your most important relationships and really look for what you love and what you value in the people who matter the most to you. You know, this can be a really special time for all of us in our relationships. I feel that it is for me and my family and including my, you know, my mom and my sister, um, but, you know, especially my husband and my son, you know, this is a special time and we won't probably won't get this back again or who knows some people say the virus is going to go away and come back and we'll all be in quarantine again in a year's time who knows but try and see it as an opportunity i know a lot of people are kind of hating on this time and oh i just want to go out i just want to go to a restaurant i just want to go and see my friends see if you can find something good in the isolation um even if you're by yourself maybe it's that time you needed to really focus on you okay and uh, for the full moon, I've put a link in the description for the full moon kit, which is 100% free. And it's uh, going to help you uh, release anything you need to release around the time of the full moon, especially around relationships because it's the full moon in Libra. And we'll do the full moon forgiveness ceremony, which I'll do online here as well. Um, okay, what else did I say I was going to talk about? I think that was it for now. And just by the way, the full moon in Libra, Libra is the sign um, associated with the planet Venus. And Venus is now slowing down, going to start to go into a retrograde soon. So again, there's a lot of emphasis on getting it right in our relationships and thinking, have I been taking someone for granted? Have they been taking me for granted? And what really, really matters? So that's kind of like the big picture. Um, so much more I could say. I will be back here tomorrow, but let's do the chant and then do a card and I'll see you tomorrow after that, okay? So for those of you joining us for the first time, this is the chant that we're doing. It comes from my teacher Narani Yama in India and it's about, uh, it's basically about destroying negativity of any kind, okay? So if, including if you're feeling a lot of fear. It's about destroying the virus, but it's also about destroying fear, anything negative at all in your life. So I'll just go through it. Om Krim. Krim is the beach mantra sound for the goddess Kali, who is the goddess we're calling on to absorb all the negativity from the world. She's the black goddess and she's black because she absorbs all our toxins without being affected by it. Maha Kali, which basically means Mother Kali, Sarva Rogam, Nasi Nasi, all disease, negativity, destroy, destroy. Nasi Nasi, destroy, destroy. And as you say Nasi Nasi, please imagine the virus being destroyed. And if there's anyone in your life who's unwell, now is the time to say their name silently or out loud and bring them into our healing circle, which is all over the world for healing and protection. Mahakali, we, we call you in. Please send healing and protection to all our families and friends, our community, our cities, our countries, 
and Mother Earth. And we're going to chant the mantra nine times. Om Krim Mahakali Sarvarogam Nasi Nasi 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 And just sit with the energy. And imagine yourself bathed in gold and light. And we send out this energy of healing to our families, our friends. our community our cities our countries and mother earth All right, and we're going to end with a card. What do you want to know? Say it out loud, write it in the comments. Commit to your question, what do you want to know? Write it on a piece of paper. Expect powerful change. Something is afoot. All right, if you've got my beautiful Moonology cards, you can read the interpretation in there, but basically it's about big changes coming. Let's hope they're really positive changes. Let's keep chanting, let's keep gathering together. Remember, if you want to get ready for the full moon, get the kit, I'll put the description somewhere, uh, off of Facebook anyway. Um, it's going to be a really powerful full moon <laughs> this this uh, time around. I'm going to try and get out in the garden to do the ceremony, which I'll be doing on full moon day. So I'm sending you lots and lots of love wherever you are. Thanks for tuning in. I'm going to read your comments now and I will see you this time tomorrow.